Let us set our minds on Calvary. Let us make a transition to worship. Let the earth be silent before him. To the God in heaven, we give you thanks, Father. We thank you for who you are, Father. We exalt you this early day, Father. Give us blessings, Father. We pray for the word this morning, Father. We pray for a Deuteronomist word, a Rima word, Father. A powerful word, Father, that will be written down on our hearts. Holy, holy, holy. Giving you thanks for all things. Because this God has done great things. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And to sing praises unto your name. O Most High, to show forth your loving kindness and thy faithfulness. Because your thoughts are very deep. Bless our God, Father. Bless our God. We thank you for these things, Father. Cover us for these days, Father. Cover us. In the God of El Shaddai, Yahweh, El Shaddai, Elohim, he has done great things. Emmanuel is with us. Our God is with us and we give you praise and thank you. We exalt you because you have done so many things. You have brought us out of Egypt by your hands, Father. You have made the sun and the moon stand still. Water and water change to wine, Father. You have stopped Paul on the Damascus Road. You have changed, you have transformed. The word of God will stand and it will stand forever. Giving you thanks, Father. Bless the worshipers. Who are the true worshipers? Who are the true worshipers? Because this God must be worshiped in spirit and in truth. So we give you thanks, Father. We give you honor. We give you adulation. We exalt you. We exalt you. Amen. Our scripture reading will be coming from out of the book of Deuteronomy, the Old Testament, the fifth chapter. The sixth verse through the twelfth verse. I am the Lord your God who have brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourselves a carved image, any likeliness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the inequity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me about showing mercy to the thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. The sixth day you shall labor and do all your works, but the seventh day, the Sabbath of the Lord your God, in that you shall do no work. You nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servants, nor your female servants, nor your ox, nor your donkeys, nor any of the cattle, not your stranger who is within you, your gates, that your male servants and your female servants may rest as well as you. And he will remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Amen.
Good morning, Mount Ali. Come on, bless the name of Jesus. We came to praise the name of Jesus. Come on, clap your hands, open your mouth, and give us glory. God, we thank you for allowing us another week to come in and worship you and give you praise and give you glory. For there's no God like you in all the earth. There's no God like you. And we bless your name. We bless your name and we give you glory today. So we came to have church. Anybody came to have church this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, by the clapping of your hands. Come on, come on. Come on, we didn't come here to sit and look at each other, but we came to magnify the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands on it. Come on. together if you came to have church come on oh say one more, one more. can he do what more can he do he has laid a foundation open up the way one more, one more. can he do say one more, one more. What more can he do? He has laid a foundation, open up the way. What more can he do? What more can he do? What more can he do? He has laid a foundation, open up the way. One more. Can he do? Can he do? Say one more. One more. Can he do? Can he do? One more. One more. Can he do? Can he do? He has laid the foundation open. Open up the way. One more. One more. Can he do? Can he do? Put your hands together. We came to bless the name of Jesus. He's our God. He's our King. So we lift you up, Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Hey, say one more. One more. Can he do? Can he do? One more. One more. Can he do? Can he do? He has laid a foundation. Open. Open up the way. One more. One more. You know you can't depend on God. Come on, put your hands on it. Hey, yeah.
cry sometimes. But I press up. God, I press up. I press for the mama. For the high calling that's in my feet. Through sickness. For the pain. For I reckon. That the sufferings of this present time. They're not worthy. To be compared. To the glory. That shall be revealed in us. Through sickness. And the pain. I know it doesn't feel good right now. I know it doesn't feel right right now. But God will see you through. God will see you through. Through the storm. Through the rain. Through sickness. And the pain. Through the storm. Through the rain. When you can't depend on nobody else, you can depend on Jesus. He's the only one that'll bring you through. So we gonna call him a little bit. Oh, what's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. My lily of the valley. Jesus. My bright and morning star. Jesus. My rose of Sharon. Jesus. My all in all. The weary land, myself in the time of Jesus. Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. 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 How I love you. Jesus. 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 How I prove you. Jesus. More and more. Jesus. 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 I can call you in the morning. Jesus. I can call you in the new day. Jesus. I can call you in the midnight hour. Jesus. How I love to call you. Jesus. 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 Put your hands together. Come on, somebody put your hands together. It's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 My provider. Jesus. My sustainer. Jesus. My way maker. Jesus. 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 Jehovah Jireh. Jesus. You've been my provider. Jesus. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Shalom, Jesus. Jehovah Roha, Jesus. Jehovah Shikrin, Jesus. Yahweh be praised, Jesus. Yahweh be praised, Jesus. Yahweh be praised, Jesus. Yahweh, praise Yahweh we praise you, Jesus. El Shaddai, Jesus. My all in all, Jesus. My all in all, Jesus. My all in all, Jesus. What's his name, Jesus? Somebody help me call him. Jesus. 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 Somebody help me. Jesus. Rose of Sharon. Jesus. Lion of Judah. Jesus. 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 Mary, baby. Jesus. Jehovah Shalom. Jesus. Jehovah Rapha. Jesus. Jehovah Nisi. Jesus. 
of Judah, that you are the King of Kings, that you are our God, that you are our healer, that you are our deliverer. 
that you are our way maker and we give you glory today so we give you what you deserve we give you what you deserve we give you what you deserve today hallelujah god and we bless you god we give you what you deserve today we lift our hands in adoration to you and we exalt you Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. God, we worship you. God, we worship you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah belongs to you. To you and you alone, Jesus. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, yeah. My hallelujah belongs to you. And this next part is my favorite part. I love it. Because this is, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah. It belongs to you. My hallelujah. Nobody gets the praise, but you got my hallelujah. My hallelujah. Can we lift it up with one voice and say, You deserve this. You deserve this, Lord. Worship it all belongs to you, Jesus. You deserve it. Cry all of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. Cry all of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. God, all of the glory, Lord. You deserve it. You deserve it, Lord. God, I give you everything that I have. You deserve it, Lord. God, you deserve my praise. You deserve my worship. And we cry hallelujah. hallelujah. We cast down our crowns. And we cry hallelujah. hallelujah. 
We join with the cherubim. We join with the cherubim. We cry hallelujah. Hallelujah. Highest praise. That I could give you God. Highest praise. That I could give you God. I lift my hands. I open my mouth. And I give you a hallelujah. I give you a hallelujah. All the glory, all the glory, all the glory, all the glory, it belongs to you, it belongs to you, it belongs to you, it belongs to you, I give you everything, I give you everything, I lay it at your feet, I lay it at your feet, you can handle it, you can do it all the glory. you can fix it all the so I give you glory all the glory. 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 somebody lift up a word come on somebody lift up a worship right here in this moment God we give you glory God we give you honor God we give you praise we take the limits off. We take the limits off. We give you every problem. We give you every situation. Because we know you can fix it. Because we know you can handle it. So we give you glory. 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 So give you glory. Oh, say hallelujah. 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 All the glory, Hallelujah. all the honor, all the, honor. All the praise, all the praise. Yeah. You, deserve. you deserve it, you deserve it, you deserve it, Lord. you deserve it, Lord. you deserve it, you deserve it, you you deserve it, you deserve it, Come on, that sounds good. You deserve it. Come on, lift it up in the room. Come on, give him what he deserves right here. Come on, give him what he deserves right now. Come on. Come on, I dare you to lift your voice and close your eyes and lift it up and tell him you deserve it. Come on, sing it. You deserve it, Lord. He deserves your worship. Come on, he deserves your praise right now. You deserve it. Come on, that sounds good. Let heaven hear you. He's fixing your situation right now. He's fixing your problem right now as you declare you deserve it. He's healing your body right now as you declare he deserves it. He's fixing that family issue right now as you declare you deserve it. Come on, believe that thing. Believe that thing when you say it. Come on, believe that thing. Believe that thing. Come on, that thing that you positioned before him. He's going to do it. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, God. Come on, praise it. You deserve it. personal my hallelujah belongs to you my hallelujah belongs to you my hallelujah belongs to you now come on 
Come on, lift it up, lift it up. Come on, you said it belongs to him. With the clapping of your hands and the opening of your mouth, come on. Give him glory. Don't stop, don't stop. Come on, don't stop, don't stop worshiping. Anybody know he's worthy? My hallelujah belongs to you. Anybody know he's worthy? He's worthy, he's worthy. Come on, come on. Come on, don't play with it, y'all. Don't play with it. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice because he's a God worth praising, he's a God worth worshiping. All the ways he's made out of no way. Anybody's testimony, he's a healer, he's a healer. He's a deliverer, he's a way maker. He's a strong tower. He's a battle axe, he's a fortress in the time of trouble. I don't know what you praise him for. But I dare you, I dare you, I dare you. Just start allowing your mind to be flooded for all of the great things that God has done. Anybody, he's dried your tears in the midnight hour. Am I by myself? When I felt like all was lost and gone, he, he tried my tears. He made a way out of no way. Hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, you know hallelujah is the highest praise. Come on. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, my hallelujah. Come on. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. I don't know like you know what he's done for you. 
Anybody testify he's done stuff for me nobody else could do if they wanted to do. You deserve it, you deserve it. sit in your presence, Lord. We sit in your presence. You are an awesome God. Come just to say we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. seconds. There's nobody like you, God. There's nobody like you, God. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise you enough. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you that you're a God just like that. We thank you that you are a God who exceeds our expectations. We thank you that you are a God who shows yourself mighty and strong. We thank you that you loved us while we were yet your enemies. We thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins. We thank you that he who had only known fellowship with you, the foundations of the world, for the love that was set before him, the joy that was set before him endured the pain of the cross that we may have this opportunity to come together this morning, oh God, just to give you our hallelujahs, just to give you our praise. From the depths of our hearts and our souls, Lord, we come with an attitude of gratitude. We come, oh God, in eager expectation of what you would do among us. We thank you that you're still healing. We thank you you're still delivering. We thank you you're still changing hearts, still changing minds. So Lord, we humbly come before you just to say thank you. Sometimes it seems like thank you's not enough. We think of all that you've done, but not just what you've done, what you're doing right now, God. And Lord, based on your past performance, we can praise you for what you will do. So now, Lord, as we prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word, this your servant stands before you as humbly as I know how. Asking you right now, Lord, to shine a light down on my soul. Heal my body. 
settle my body, focus my mind. Lord, I pray that you let me down in the deep treasures of your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That we may hear from you. Didn't come to hear Reggie, we came to hear from you. Didn't come to hear poetry, we come to hear from you. So Lord, have your way in this place. Use these lips of clay. Hide me behind the cross that you may be lifted up. For you said, if I be lifted up, I'll do the drawing. I'll draw all men unto me. So, Lord, we thank you in advance for what you will do. And It is our collective prayer that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, who is our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus the Christ's name, we do pray and say, amen. Come on, if God has been good to you, I dare you take about 10 to 15 seconds just to put your hands together, tell them thank you. I don't want to be one who's accused of not having the requisite level of gratitude for all that God has done. How many of you know that Somebody does something good to you and good for you, nice to you, and you don't tell them thank you. All you do is mess up your future blessings. And I don't know about y'all, I need too much from the Lord to mess up what I already got. Y'all ain't gonna help me in the place. Bless his holy name. We give God glory and honor. Uh, help me thank God for the worship team, amen, who is ushered us into the presence of the Lord and even extended to give us time to get here. Amen. Amen. I want to, I was going to do the announcements, but I'm just going to go right into the word. Uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm going to read verses 1 through 12 and then 17 through 22 1 through 12 and 17 through 22 we made a, a promise that we start reading more so that we can get more out of it is our prayer I want to I want to think out loud from this thought today what made Jesus happy what made Jesus rejoice Again, that's Luke chapter 10, Matthew, Mark. I need some Bible readers to help me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. That's right. Luke is found between Mark and John. The good news is that 10 is always between 9. Y'all you know, got it. Y'all got it don't have to go too far down we're going to start at the first verse have you spoken to the person next to you you told them how excited you are that they came to the house of the lord today this one of them times you glad you got to church on time so you didn't have to get caught up in the rain amen because it's coming down it's coming down there's a storm out over the ocean and it's moving this away if your soul ain't anchored in Jesus it will surely drip y'all act like that come on there's a storm out over the ocean and it's moving this away if your soul ain't Drift away, drift away, drift away, drift away, you 
Put your hands together. You will surely, you will surely rip the way, rip the way. If your soul, if your soul, in Jesus, you will surely, rip the way, rip the way. Put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Luke, Luke. Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, amen. I just like that old school church, y'all have to forgive me. Drift away, no, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, I'll be reading from the New King James translation. It reads like this. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them out two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. We got a lot of workers. Y'all ain't gonna help me. A lot of people show up. But the laborers are few. So what is the remedy to that situation? Therefore, pray. Let the church say pray. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. And to whose harvest? My harvest. Yo harvest, Mount Ali harvest, his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Not wolves among wolves, but lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals. Greet no one along the road, but whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give for the worker. I mean, the laborer, the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house, whatever city you enter, and they receive you. Eat such things as are set before you. Verse 9, and Heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its streets and say, the very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you, but I say to you that it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. I might as well read the rest of it. Woe to you, Corazon. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. He who hears you, hears 
me. He who rejects you rejects me. And he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. So I want us to focus on then the 70. Return with what? Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons, the devils, the evil spirits are subject to us. In whose name? In your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing and nothing and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. In that hour, Jesus got happy, y'all. Jesus shouted. Jesus was glad. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. The help of the Lord for just a few moments, I want to talk from this thought. What makes Jesus happy? What makes Jesus rejoice? We know that the word of God is already blessed. This week, I was in Kansas City uh, for the National Baptist Convention. And I got a good friend named John Harrell. I can tell his name now because I didn't want anybody mad at him because he gave me the tickets and not them. Uh, but you know that if you're a football fan, that the opening week of the NFL season, uh, there's a few fans in here, Amen. The opening week of the NFL season was this week, and the opening game was the defending national champions. From the devil is a liar, amen. <laughs> that that the defending national champions, the Kansas City Chiefs. For those of you who don't know, that's where I'm from, Kansas City. Going to Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. Amen. And here it is, y'all, that, that I was able, uh, through John's generous contribution, to go to the game. And not only was I able to go to the game, I had some real good seats. Sitting on the fit. And I'm not saying this to brag, just, just to benefit it. When you're friendly to other folks, folks will be friendly unto you. I wish I had some help, but... But I was able, that's favor, that's right, that's favor. I was able to go to the game, sit on about the 50-yard line on the 16th row. Good seats. And what was fascinating is that I had not been to a Kansas City Chiefs game in probably 25 years. I said, wow, too, that I've been, it's something when you can start marking uh, significant milestones in your life by more than 20 years. I got nervous, Deacon Cook. I got nervous that, that I had not been to a game in 25 years. Uh, I wasn't that excited at first. Uh, but the closer I got to the stadium, I wish I had some help up in here. The, 
the more I felt my energy and excitement, Sister DuPont, begin to, to rise within me. Then we rolled upon the stadium and I saw the marquee. As we turned the corner, I, I was greeted by a sea of red. As we went a little deeper in, we got into the parking lot. You know, it was $50 to park, y'all. It was 250 for the gold section. Y'all know we didn't do the gold section, amen. But, but as we got there, it was so amazing to see this sea of red and what was a huge tailgate party. I mean, people were kicking it, y'all. Having a good time. I felt my excitement level get a little bit higher. As I started walking through the sea of red, hearing people shout and celebrate the Chiefs, we made our way into the stadium. As I got into the stadium, you could fear, feel the rumble and excitement of the crowd, the energy pulsing all around us. As we made our way to our seats, I started looking around and said, ain't God good, ain't God good, amen. As we got in there, and I got, I got so excited. And I'm not a very excitable person, except when it comes to Jesus. I don't get really excited about too much. Uh, some people don't like that or got concerns about me because I don't always seem excited. Well, I just know the right things to be excited about. But I broke my rule, and I got excited about the Chiefs. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. I got I got excited in the moment when things looked like they were going well. It appeared as if the Chiefs initially were about to win the game. You should have seen me in there. I'm out there. Oh, I, I'm, I'm giving high five to white folks and black folks and the Mexican for all types of people. We're, we're celebrating. We're excited in the moment because the Chiefs are scoring. The Chiefs look like they're going to win. There was a Detroit fan sitting next to me. She got excited when they scored. First time I said, remember, there's four quarters. Chiefs came back to take a lead, but lo and behold, in the second half, seemed like they just imploded. They just literally almost came apart. I've never seen, uh, they said that he had the right, the brother, I forget his name, I ain't going to call his name, had the right color gloves on, yellow gloves, because he was Butterfingers that day. He was Butterfingers, and he dropped about four or five critical passes, and I remember how excited I was when I first went in, I was so excited, y'all. I spent $40 on a Chiefs t-shirt. And I'm what you might call frugal. I wish I had some help up in here. But, but I was excited. I, I was lifted up. I was jubilant, Sister Denise. And next thing I know, as the clock began to tick down, I was talking so much trash to all my friends from Detroit, I had to leave the building early. Because if you saw the final score, the Chiefs end up losing the game. Now, and I had to take a moment and reflect on how excited I got over something I couldn't control. How excited I got because of the atmosphere that was in the building. How excited I got for my hometown team. Y'all should have seen me. But then, lo and behold, my level of excitement didn't make them win. And they still lost. But I got good news for you. I've got a winning team for you. I wish I had some help up in here. I've got a winning team with receivers that never drop the ball. Defensive players that always make the tackle. You know what it's called, don't you? It's called Team Jesus. And I started to, to reflect on my excitement on a losing team. And I had to raise the question, how much more should I get excited when I think about the goodness of the Lord? I wish I had some church folks that have helped me and all oh, that he's done and, and my soul gets happy. I want to raise the question, what makes you excited? 
What, what, what gets you to the place where your soul is lifted and exalted? I, I would suggest, brothers and sisters, it ought not be in a football team. Ought not be in a basketball team. Shouldn't be in other people because other people will disappoint you and let you down. Shouldn't be in material things of this world. Shouldn't be in houses and cars. All it takes is one calamity, one unfortunate thing, and it all can be walked all can be wiped away. You ought to put your hope on things eternal. You ought to build your hope on things that will stand on Christ, the solid rock. Now here it is, brothers and sisters, that when you think about it, if there's anything to get excited about, it ought to be Jesus. Am I talking to anybody that can tell the truth that you know like nobody else knows what the Lord has done for you? Am I talking to anybody that can testify it wasn't nobody but the Lord who kept me when I didn't know how to keep myself? It wasn't nobody but the Lord who made a way out of no way. It wasn't nobody but the Lord who dried my tear-stained eyes. It wasn't nobody but the Lord. That's the reason I can't help but get excited. We, we get excited about Jesus, all that he's done. But I want to raise the question, do we get excited about what makes Jesus excited? Do we get excited about what makes Jesus excited? Every now and then when we peruse through the Holy Scriptures, we get a firsthand glimpse and to the humanity of our Christ. Yes, he was fully divine, but he also was fully human. He felt like we feel. We talked about last week how he knew the bitter sting of betrayal. How he knew what it is to be lonely and alone and misunderstood in this life. On at least three occasions, we read that Jesus wept. He cried. Tears came streaming down his face. But on one occasion, one occasion in the Gospels, we read about something that made Jesus rejoice. And I would suggest by, by a way of deduction that Jesus said, I only do what I see my father in heaven doing. So if Jesus rejoiced, it would seem that the same things would make our heavenly father rejoice. Are y'all tracking with me? Jesus can only do what he sees his father doing. So what we see in Jesus is the physical witness and example of what our heavenly father cares about what our heavenly father does and here in the text we discover that there was something that motivated Jesus to rejoice but not just rejoice the Bible says he rejoiced in the spirit when you look at the original language it is not just a smile not just a joyous occasion but literally with everything in him with passion with energy Jesus began to rejoice why did Jesus rejoice it's because nobody's became somebody what, 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 what made Jesus rejoice it, it wasn't because some great religious leader because a Pharisee or a Sadducee or a scribe or a lawyer had, had converted and come to Jesus, but 70 ordinary disciples. 70 people who we don't even know their name. 70 poor folks, 70 artisans, 70 probably fishermen, 70 who we have no other record except the fact that they trusted 
and believed in the word of the Lord. And here it is, brothers and sisters. I don't know about y'all, but that's good news. That Jesus gets excited that when folks like you and folks like me believe the Lord Jesus and we go do what he tells us to do. Now, what is it when we begin to, to examine? The Bible says that Jesus called and appointed 70 others also and sent them out two by two to every city and every place where he himself was about to go. And as he sends them out, you can read the instructions that he gives them that the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. You must understand this analogy. It is as if a farmer of a vast region of ripe ground sees that the harvest is ready and he knows that unless there are laborers who go and reap the crop, reap the harvest, that it will be wasted and will ultimately end up ruined. I want you to think about in our world today how many people go hungry. Think about in our world today how many people need to know about this man named Jesus. And it is literally Jesus giving us a stern word that there are abundant fields ripe and ready for the harvest. But can I find some people who get excited about what I get excited about? It was a Barna report that suggested only 50% of Christians know the Great Commission. Go ye therefore. What do you got to do? You got to teach, preach, and make disciples. First thing is go. Now we cannot be the church that God has called us to be if we're stuck within the four walls of the congregation. There wasn't a day that the attractional method would work. If you build it, they will come. But all you got to do is stroll up and down Fulton Avenue. I can't get no help up in here. All you got to do is stand on the corner of Rockaway, St. Mark's, and Eastern Parkway. You can throw a rock and hit seven churches. So, so it's not that... There is a lack of houses of worship or opportunities for people to come. It seems as if there's some disconnect because the laborers have stopped going. And you imagine the frustration of our Lord and Savior, the frustration of God the Father, that he has done the great work, the heavy lifting. He has tilled the soil. He has broke open the hard ground. He has planted the seed in the hearts and minds of men and women who are ready to be reaped in to the abundant harvest of the Lord. He just can't find nobody to go. You know why Jesus got excited? Because somebody responded to the word to go. Now, if we won't go for the Lord, why do we expect God to go for us? I can't get no help up in here. Have you thought about your unanswered prayers? Have you thought about the moments of frustration where we are so quick to list everything we want God to do for us? Have you thought about all of your petitions and your supplications to the Lord? But I want to raise the question, what have you decided you're going to do for God? I don't want to sound like a politician, but John F. Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you. I can't get no help up in here, but what? Can you do for your country? Quit asking God to do stuff for you without asking God, what can I do for you, Lord? As an act of gratitude for all that you have done in my life. I can't stand ungrateful people. 
proud and arrogant. When is the last time you pause long enough to ask the Lord, Lord, what can I do for you? Well, I got good news. He says right here, I'm telling you to go. Telling you get out the four walls. Start using your phone for evangelistic purposes rather than spreading mess. I can't get no help up in here. Start using this digital device, this computer in your hand to do more than scroll through your timeline more to scroll through your feed. I can't get no help up in here. But but every now and then you ought to turn open to your Bible app. Can I get a little help up in here and study to show thyself approved every now and then you got to turn it around. I hear God saying, what are you doing for me? You look at the world, there's so much that could disappoint our Savior. So much that could disappoint our Christ. We're looking at a world in crisis all around us. Wars and rumors of wars. Massive floods and mudslides. Hurricanes and tropical storms from the East Coast now to the West Coast. Tornadoes all around us, massive ice blocks falling away in Antarctica, the sea levels rising. There's so much around us. I believe God just wants to see if somebody cares about what he cares about. When is the last time you thought about what gets Jesus excited? It's easy, brothers and sisters, to get distracted by the exciting things of this world. But have you ever thought about it? That this time that we have in this life is so small. Think about how fast this year has flown by. Think about how we lost three or four years because of COVID-19. Think back, y'all remember back in 1999, we thought that the world was going in. I can't help get no help. Don't party like it's 1999 because this might be it, Sherrod. Do you remember? I want you to think about how time is filled with swift transition. We're so focused on our own excitement, gratification, aggrandizement in this world. But I want you to know what makes hell tremble as when people remember that we are spiritual people having a natural experience. What makes hell tremble is when we remember that we come from an eternal place. We are an eternal people who can't get caught up in the temporal distractions of this life, of this age, and of this world. What gets you truly excited? Excited about cars that need gas that you can't afford. I can't get no help up in here. I got a car now. If I get a car again, I'm getting a regular car to get regular unleaded. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. Get excited about clothes. I got some new custom suits. I hadn't worked out much during the month of August. And my suits was fitting a little tight. I can't get no help up in here. We, we, we get excited about people who disappoint us and let us down. We get excited about jobs that don't care about you, that will let you go as soon as you get older and as soon as your pay grade keeps rising, they'll let you go for somebody younger, less experienced. What are you really getting excited about? I hear God saying we ought to be excited about eternal things. About things that really matter. Only what you do for Christ. I got some people going to help me preach up in here. Will will last. 
Only what we do when we respond as they responded. What, what, what is it that Jesus got excited about? That when they came back, I'm almost done. I ain't going to keep you long today. They, they came back with joy. I want you to think seriously. What's the last thing that truly gave you joy? Not, not contentment in the moment. Not happiness, not you felt good momentarily and temporarily, but, but what is the last thing you've done that truly gave you joy, Deek? Is it anything that's giving you joy that's been disconnected from the Lord? Is it anything that's giving you joy that has been grounded in this world? No, only what you do for Christ will last. At the 70 went out, unknown, unnamed. That this 70 was not recorded among the 12 apostles, the 12 disciples. That this 70, it is believed, were ordinary common folk who simply trusted and believed in what God said. Good news, y'all, is that you don't need more degrees in a thermometer to have joy. The good news is that you don't need power, you don't need position, you don't need prestige to have true joy. The good news is that, that I know some of us, and I ain't talking about nobody wear hats and fine clothes. You don't need no hat in the sanctuary. You ain't going to help me. You, you don't need no three-piece suit. You don't need none of that to truly have joy. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but it ain't the ground and the being of true joy. Only what we do for Christ is going to matter because it has eternal consequences. What gets Jesus excited is that when those who the world said is nobody ordinary people decide to get on team Jesus. Decide that I'm going to do what Jesus tells me to do. What does Jesus tell him to do? Can I argue for just a few moments? I want you to look back at verse 10. Chapter 10, excuse me. Jesus gets excited when we decide to stop being workers and start truly being laborers. Workers just work to get paid. Laborers work to see the job get done. Workers work to see their name on the program. Workers work that somebody may acknowledge them. Workers do it for the applause and the celebration of other people but I need some true laborers who say I'll do it when ain't nobody watching I'll do it if don't nobody say thank you I'll do it because it don't matter because I'm doing it for the right reasons I've come to labor because I want Jesus when he thinks about my name when I wake up in the morning when I step out my door, I want Jesus to be excited saying he is one of my laborers who is going into the vineyard to work for the Lord. Je Jesus gets excited when we transition from just workers to true laborers. People who stay until the job is done. People who do it for the right reason. Now, he really gets excited, y'all. There's a couple things I want to point out. When we go out in full trust and confidence in him. God doesn't get excited when you got confidence and trust in yourself. He gets excited when you have full confidence and trust in him. Can I argue from the text? He says, don't take money bag, knapsack. Sandals? What is he saying? That, that, that I get excited when you stop depending on the things of this world and just trust in me. When you stop 
thinking that it is about the materialistic and the natural things. I've come to tell somebody what you wear when you witness ain't going to make much difference. If your heart ain't right. If you ain't doing it for the right reasons. It don't matter whether you got on red bottoms or pro kids. I can't get no help up in here. Whether you got holes in the bottom of your shoes or, or you got uh, Jimmy Choo's. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. Louboutin. I don't know if I said it right, but y'all know what I'm talking about. It don't matter if your heart is right and you're truly a laborer. God said, I don't get caught up in all of that stuff. I hear Paul saying that when I'm weak, it's then that I'm strong. It's when I am fully trusting and depending on the Lord. Second thing, he says that, that I get excited when you go out and you're focused. Listen to what he says. And greet no one along the road. How much work and witness do you think is missed because we're too distracted? Don't you know that's one of the devil's cheap tactics to get us distracted worrying about anything and everything else than the work that is at hand. It don't matter who lead in the ministry. It's about the mission of the ministry. I can't get no help up in here. It don't matter if you lead in the song. You ought to just be glad that somebody let you sing. What, what, what are the things that have us distracted in this moment? Distracted worrying about everything except the main thing. What gets Jesus excited? Some folks may not like me. Don't get distracted by me. I got some idiosyncrasies. I got some ways about me. But one thing I know, I hear from the Lord. Don't miss what God is saying because you're getting confused about the messenger. I can't get no help up in here. Don't miss what thus says the Lord because you focused on the wrong thing, talking to the wrong folks. I've discovered, brothers and sisters, you get more done talking to God about it than talking to other folks. If I can impress anything upon your heart and your soul, quit complaining to other people. Quit complaining to yourself. Quit stressing and quit worrying about it, but learn how to take it to the Lord in prayer. But the things in my life that the more I talked about it, the worse it got. Am I talking to anybody? The more you complain about it, the worse it gets. Because energy flows where attention goes. Energy flows where attention goes. The more time we spend focused on the things that are distracting us, the further we get away from the Lord. But I've come to tell somebody, learn how to just have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. Learn how to stay focused. Then... then I wish I had time to go to it. Y'all come back Tuesday. We're kicking off Bible study. On Tuesday, we're going to do an exhaustive study of this. But then he says in verse 5, Whatever house you enter first, stay there. Peace, say this house. And the son of peace is there. Your peace will rest on it, and it will not return to you. Quit bouncing around from place to place. What God gets excited about is when you stay committed and focused where you are. If something is not right where you are, I got good news and bad news. The bad news is when you go somewhere else, the same stuff that was there is going to be there when you get there. The good news is that the only way you change a culture is from inside the culture. If you see things that you don't like, Jesus wants to see people who are going to be committed, who are going to be dedicated to staying around, to making the difference. He said, don't go from house to house. Don't go from church to church. Don't go from ministry to ministry. Don't go from boo to bay to boo back to bay. But when you find a good thing, I can't get no help up in here. You better learn how to stick it out. Stick it out. 
It's a whole nother sermon for another day. Look at somebody learn to stay where y'all, stay where y'all, stay where y'all. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Verse nine, verse nine. Jesus gets excited when we heal the sick. And we would declare the kingdom of God has come near you. That if we're going to be a church, some folks ought to get healed every now and then. And I thank God we got the witness that folks be getting healed up in here. That, 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 that's what get Jesus excited. But let, let me hasten, let me hasten on uh, and get ready uh, to take my seat. But verse 21, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced. What preceded it? He, he said, when they came back, they, they were excited. You know why he got excited? He said, because I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Now, now, it is suggested that this, in fact, uh, was uh, backward looking to where Satan fell when he tried to rise up against our Heavenly Father. But, but I believe that it is a, a spiritual reenactment that every time Satan loses dominion and territory, the Lord is like, I see him falling. And here it is, brothers and sisters, that, that, that Jesus gets excited because he sees Satan falling and he sees our authority rising. Listen to what it says. I give to you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But then he says, nevertheless, do not rejoice that the spirits are subject to you, but the real reason you ought to rejoice is because your name is written in heaven. Don't worry if your name is not written. Yeah. We only have programs no more, so y'all know, but it's all good. But 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 don't 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 rejoice and get excited over these temporary temporal things. When Jesus talks about the demons are subject, a lot of times the connection in that day was that the evil and demonic spirits would manifest themselves as sicknesses, as diseases, as mental issues, and as challenges. So there's a connection here. But this is what I discovered. Every time laid hands on somebody and healed them, it wasn't forever. I can't get no help up in here. That, 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 that when you, you, you do things in this world, everything in this world has an expiration date. I don't care how much money you get, the IRS coming to take some of it. They got uh, 30,000 new workers, too. You better watch yourself. Better watch yourself. I don't care. Whatever you focus your energy and excitement on in this life, it has an expiration date. One day, them clothes are going to wear out. One day, that car is going to quit running. One day, them shoes, because your feet going to swell as the older you get. Y'all ain't going to holler at me. They ain't going to fit no more. What used to look like the beauty going to turn to the beast. I'm done. I'm done. I'm just playing around now. I'm just playing. L listen, listen, listen to what God says. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to what God says. That the real reason you ought to rejoice is because your name has been written in heaven. I, I, don't, I don't know about y'all, but the more I see, the more I understand the magnitude of that statement. I want you to think about it. We're we, we, we living in a time when leading presidential candidates can have more bankruptcies, more indictments, more lawsuits 
Think about it, you know, if you don't like America, where are you going to go? Between corruption, they, they say it ain't even global warming no more, it's global boiling. What else you need to see to recognize that this life ain't all that there is? That I've got to reorient my focus to things eternal. And hear what Jesus got excited about. That ordinary people, names never listed, simply believe the gospel enough to go tell somebody. It ain't about me, but I'm preparing the way for one who's coming. And when he gets here, he will reveal all things. He will make all things new. Listen to what Jesus got excited. He said that you ought to be rejoicing because your name has been written. How? How beautiful a proposition. That I ought not be rejoicing because I got a Benny Hinn ministry. You know, I don't believe in everything that Benny Hinn did, but, but that you got these great crusades, that you doing all of these things. He said, because everybody ain't going to do that. Everybody don't have the gift of healing. Everybody don't have the gift of deliverance. Everybody can't sing. Everybody can't dance. Everybody can't preach. Everybody can't usher. But everybody can have Jesus. Everybody can merely confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And when you recognize that's the true source of my joy, it puts everything else in perspective. You wonder how I'm able to go through what I go through because I know where I'm going. I was standing there when he signed my name. <laughs> I, I, I get excited because I know that no matter what this world brings, that it ain't about this life. I'm merely sending up timber. I'm sending up bricks for my mansion. I'm merely working down here for what I believe God has up there. You know why Jesus got excited? Because he said it ain't for the wise of this world. It's for the babes. It's for those who the world may not think that we smart enough. That, you know, people think we fools for believing in Jesus the way we believe in him. People think we crazy. What's wrong with them? Because they don't know what we know. Because I've seen the end of the story. And I do know that one day, when it's all over. I may have had to bear some crosses down here, but I shall wear a crown. One day, I'm going to put on my long robe. One day, I've had to walk through some holy streets in this world with, with potholes and with cracks and that life ain't been no crystal stair, but, but one day, I'm going to walk on streets Pay with gold. I get excited that no matter who I see in this world, I, I saw Neil Smith, one of my favorite football players, and it was good to see him, but he ain't who I'm looking forward to seeing. I'm looking forward to one day I'll see him for myself. One day I want to see the hands that bore the nails for me. One day I want to see the feet that had the nails in his feet. One day I want to see his brow that was ripped for my sins. One day I want to see the hole in his side. One day I want to see him for myself. Jesus get excited when we recognize that this ain't all that there is. But one day I shall see him for myself. I feel like Job and my eyes shall behold not another, but I know my Redeemer lives and I'll see him for myself one day. We'll stick our swords in the sands of time to study war no more. One day, Jesus gets excited when we recognize it. it ain't about down here. 
It's about that one day. Y'all do know that day is coming, don't you? It's the check you got to cash. It's the knock on your door. You got to open. One day. Jesus gets excited when people like you and me go tell the story. Then one day, I met a man named Jesus who came into my life who made a difference. That's the good news. That's what gets Jesus excited. It ain't in our programs. It ain't in all those other things. But it's about spreading the good news of the gospel. Jesus said, if your name is never mentioned, if you never have a position or a title, Never get consecrated as a bishop in our Lord Jesus Church. Never get ordained. It don't matter. But what does matter is if you go tell somebody the kingdom of God is near. Jesus is real. That the way of salvation is simple. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart upon Christ Jesus and you shall be saved. The Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice over one. You you don't think they doing what they saw Jesus do? What they see our heavenly father do? And after all that God has done for us, I made up my mind I want to do something for him. I want to do the thing that brings God joy. Men and women may know there is a reality in serving Jesus Christ. Let us be laborers. Let us have a confidence and a trust in God. Let us be focused. Let us steady our hand for the work. Let us continue to heal the sick. Let us continue to go out so that demons are subject to us in the name of Jesus. But what ought to really get you excited is that your name has been written in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's time to get right, church. It's time to focus on the main things. Time to not be distracted by persons or personalities, by tradition, by any of those things, but focus on what got Jesus excited that somebody was used to go tell somebody about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, as we open the doors of the church, maybe there's someone here. It's not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Who wants to join this, the Mount Olive Baptist Church. Or maybe you just need prayer. The altar is open. Oh, 
Amen. We see there's room and yet none to come. Thank God for the word. We thank God for the reminder. Of what makes Jesus rejoice? Ought to be the same thing that causes us to rejoice. To prepare now for our announcements. following persons uplifted in prayer. Mother Richardson, Mother Battle, Rosemary Green, Priscilla Stuckey, Janet Stevens, Vivere McCance Gent, Debbie Barber Banks, Virginia and Ernest I, Trina Pruden, Aaron Harrison, Milton Brown, Norma Usher Goodman, Marcus Hatley II, Deacon Kevin Hayes, Tyshawn Cobb, and James Milton. Tuesday, September 12th, we will be resuming our 12 noon and 7.30 evening Bible study. Wednesday, September 13th, from 5 to 6.30 p.m., Community Corners has requested that we be at Pacific and Thomas Boylan, to, and they requested that we pray for the community. They will be giving out resources. We ask that whosoever will join us Please wear your t-shirts if you have them. At 6.30 p.m., the monthly PHT service, prayer, healing, and testimony. Thursday, September 14, from 7 to 8 p.m., community corners will be on the prayer line. Saturday, September 16, 8 a.m., men's Bible study, and at 10 a.m., the Youth Success Saturday. All youth are expected to attend. Sunday, September 17th, homecoming, where we spell out with $1 for each letter representing where you went on vacation. If you stayed at home, the offering would be $15 for Brooklyn, New York. We have homecoming envelopes for you to use. And this is also Youth Day, and we are asking that you all youth be in service for the back to school celebration after service. Church anniversary obligations, working with your month cap, monthly captain. We, are, we hope that you'll be working with your monthly captains. Individual assessment is $91. Auxiliary assessment is $100. And they all, all the monies are due by Sunday, September 24th. Tuesday, September 19th, regular Bible study at 12 noon and 7.30 p.m. at 6.30 p.m., the monthly six-fold meeting will be held. Wednesday, September 20th at 6.30, choir rehearsal. Thursday, September 28th at 7.30 p.m., the church, item, the church will have an outing to the Apostolistic Temple of Jesus Christ, located at 137-18 Farmers Boulevard in Springfield Gardens, New York. If you can, the pastor is asking for your support and attendance. On Saturday, September 30th, 8 a.m., Mod Ali will have a 3K community walk for health and wellness. You can see the website for, for the flyer. Scan the code to register and give your friends and family uh, notice so that they, can too, they too can register. Brother LeVar Folk will be registering after service. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Good day. Amen. We thank Sister Rudine for the announcements. Just briefly, uh, I'm going to make one amendment for the Ph.D. and T service, prayer healing and deliverance. Prayer healing and deliverance. We're going to push it back from to the 20th, and we're going to partner with Charity Neighborhood uh, Cathedral, Bishop Kareem Evans, uh, and we're going to come together for a Holy Ghost prayer, healing, and deliverance service. If you got any sick, bring them out. Anybody need to be delivered or something, bring them out. 
We're going to be in prayer and fasting leading up to then. Uh, we're going back to the old school. So we're going to tarry. We're going to pray. And we're going to believe God for the supernatural on Wednesday, uh, September 20th. Wednesday, September 20th at 7 p.m. Wednesday, September 20th at 7 p.m. Uh, we're going to be in here laying hands, believing God. Amen. Anybody believe God with me? I got four hands. Anybody believe God with me? Huh? All right. So on September 20th, September 20th is going to be our PhD prayer healing and deliverance service. Wednesday, September 20th. So if you know anybody, you want to have them come out. Uh, we're going to be in here believing God for miracles, signs, wonders, healing and deliverance. Also, on tomorrow morning at 7.45 a.m., from 7.45 to 7.55, they started a prayer line for the mayor of New York City, uh, Mayor Adams. So I'm going to be leading that prayer tomorrow morning, uh, September 11th, 9-11, from 7.45 to 7.55 I'll give out the number on the prayer line in the morning, but if anybody wants to take it down now, uh, the dialing number is 1-848-220-3300. Again, that number is 1-848-220-3300. The pin, just like our prayer line, is 277-2977. Again, that pin number is 277-2977. Uh, they've asked me to pray for the mayor uh, tomorrow. So I thank God for the opportunity. Somebody must think I can get a prayer through. I can't get no help up in here. Church, y'all think we can get a prayer through? Amen. So I'm asking you to be in prayer from 745 to 755 if you can join us uh, tomorrow, 745 a.m. A.m. to 755 a.m. 1-848-220-3300. That pen is 277-2977. I'll read it again uh, in the morning on the prayer line. Starting next Sunday, third Sunday, September 17th. Uh, we're starting our leadership development, our leadership identification classes in the fellowship hall from 9 a.m. to 1030, 9 a.m. to 1030, asking uh, those who have been contacted or will be contacted to be here from 9 to 10 will be the leadership lesson. And then we'll do Sunday school from 10 to 1030. And I'll be teaching that that's from 9 to 10. So asking all leaders, all ministry leaders, and those who would like to be leaders, amen. This will be mandatory. There'll be eight sessions. You have to attend six of the eight to be a leader in 2024. You have to attend six of the eight to be a leader in 2024. Uh, and then on this Saturday, the 16th, want to be reminded, our men's prayer breakfast. We'll have our men's prayer breakfast this Saturday at 8 a.m., uh, to 10 a.m. at 10 a.m. We have our Youth Success Saturdays. We're going to be making banners for our Mount Ali 3K Community Walk for Health and Wellness. So we're asking all of our artistic youth to be out, even if you're not artistic, to come out. There will be uh, a word. Going forward, we take annual trips. Your attendance at Success Saturdays will indicate if you get a full sponsorship going forward. So if you don't show up on Saturdays, you're not going to get fully sponsored the way we've done in the past. We don't want to develop a children with entitlement complex. And those who think just because they show up, they ought to be rewarded. So we are setting different sets of expectations for the next year. So if you can't be here on Saturday. Uh, don't expect for us to fully pay for your trip next August. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we are keeping track of that. It's only once a month. So you have several opportunities. You got three other weekends. We only keep you from 10 to 12. 
Uh, so we ask you the men to be here at 8 a.m., our youth to be here at 10 a.m. Uh, and then on Saturday, September 30th, is our Mount Ali 3K Walk uh, for Health and Wellness. Uh, we are excited. We've asked all ministry leaders to participate. Uh, please register. We'll be walking. It's a little over one mile, no more than a 20, 30-minute walk uh, down to the playground at PS 275 on Thatford and uh, Linden Boulevard. It's a brand new park. Uh, we don't want more community people there than Mount Ali people. Amen. Uh, it is one of the ways that we are taking our witness out, uh, out of the sanctuary into the streets. We are grateful for the leadership of those who have put it together. Uh, you can pre-register after service again with Brother LeVar Folk. You can pre-register with Brother LeVar Folk on the bulletin board downstairs as you go out. There is a QR code, uh, and all you do with the QR code is pull up your camera on your phone. And it will send you to a link where you can fill out all the information. We're trying to get as many people as we can to pre-register. Uh, but we also, for those who do not use that level of technology, we've got paper forms where you can sign up with Brother LeVar uh, after service. It's raining outside, so I don't know. Stand up, LeVar, so people know who you are. Uh, Brother LeVar Folk, uh, you can see him after service to sign up. Amen. Amen. I got one other announcement, but we got a praise report from uh, Minister McCants. Good afternoon, church. I uh, missed you guys on last week. I was out of hurt, so I thank God for a healing. I couldn't, I couldn't get out the the, the bed uh, for about three days, and so I miss church and I miss you all. Um, I come to you today, though, with a praise report um, for my sister. Um, you hear her on the announcements, Beverly McCann's Gent. Um, in January, as most of you know, my mom passed away. And two days after we buried her, she announced to us that she had a relapse with her cancer. And the doctor had given her 90 days to live. And that was in January. Um, she, she went to seek more help, and she went to Sloan Kettering. And they did confirm what the doctor said, but they said that they would, they would take on her case. Uh, I immediately went to pastor, and as he said earlier, he doesn't get too excited. And he looked at me, and he said, go and lay your hands on her and pray. And I did so, and uh, brought my dad in. We prayed for her, and I'm just here to tell you all that uh, as of August, I believe six was her last chemo therapy, and amen, amen. And as of today, she is cancer free. Come on, it is no secret what God can do. You ought to praise Him for your person you praying for. If he did it before, he can do it again. He is a healer. Yes, he is. I want you to think of somebody you know that's going through cancer right now. 
I want you to intercede in praise for them right now. I know I hear from the Lord. Somebody's healing is in this room. Somebody's deliverance is in this room. If he did it before, he can do it again. If you just can't believe on the Lord God. say thank you to all of you. Thank you to the God above. And the question is, won't he do it? And the answer is, yes, he will. I'm so grateful for prayer works. And we are praying church. So stay strong. I love you all. And keep up all the good work. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. When he told me about his sister, something in my spirit said, you go lay hands on her and watch God work. See, I'm trying to develop a church where it ain't just the pastor who can lay hands and people get healed. But I release the healing anointing in the name of Jesus. You got to learn how to lay hands on yourself. Lay hands on your brothers and your sisters and watch God work. He is a healer. He is a healer. He is a healer. I know that he is. I, 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 I know that he is. I gotta pray, I gotta pray, and I gotta get it out. I gotta pray. I, I gotta pray, I gotta pray, and I gotta get it out. I gotta pray. Oh, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Why don't you? 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 Help me praise Him. Help me praise Him. Help me praise Him. Anybody learn how to praise him on this side of the miracle? I've learned how to praise him before it happens. To God be the glory. To God. To God be the glory. He's done. 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 He's done.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody got a testimony that you know he's a healer? He's a keeper. He done great things. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for all the things He, he has done. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the testimony. We just were talking about healing. What God has done. It is my sincere prayer. that We're not a church where we think the pastor the only one. But I'm trying to do all I can to impart in us. That if I hear a word and I tell you go lay hands, you go do it. Just like these unnamed disciples. They just did what they heard. And you saw what God did. There's so many testimonies about people being healed. I'm looking at some folks right now. Doctors had given up. Said it was a 50-50 chance. Doctors said it was over. Some folks who shouldn't be here right now. But God is still in the healing business. And we thank God. Let the church say amen. Another praise report that some of us can't stand each other for 40 minutes, 40 days, 40 weeks. But God has given Sister Kim the strength to stick with Clark <laughs> for 40 years. Come on, let's give God some praise as they celebrate their 40th wedding anniversary. Sister Kimberly Clark, stand up, Brother Leonard Clark in the back, and we thank God for them as we celebrate as we celebrate Kim is going to get sainted amen she's going to be a saint but we are grateful for them and for their work and witness uh, and their ministry amen uh, today we're going to have the offering and recognition of our nurses this is our nurses anniversary let's thank God for our nurses for our nurses amen amen we're grateful so uh, I'm actually, I'm going to do it before the offering, if that's all right. We're going to ask that our nurses will come now, uh, will come up. They're just, I'm going to do a rededicatorial prayer, we'll do their history, remarks by President Sister Gwendolyn Moultrie. We'll take our offering, have the benediction, and head on home. Amen. I think it stopped raining. So we we trying to trying to keep you dry. Amen. Take care of yourself. There's something going around. It's getting a lot of people sick. Had me sick week before. And I don't get sick often. But it was bad. I couldn't even move. It wasn't a vid. I took I took a, a test. It wasn't COVID. But it was something. Amen. So take care of yourself. Let's put our hands together and thank God for our nurses as they come. And look at young Kylie, our young nurse. Amen. We thank God for her. Uh, as we pray now, I ask you to be in prayer that our nurses are uh, our first line of response, our first responders uh, here in the sanctuary. People do grow ill every now and then uh, or need things particularly uh, they look out for me to make sure that I have 
uh, what I need that I may minister to the best of my abilities. So I am grateful. Uh, and it's just good to thank them. I hope you don't need them, but it's good to have them just in case. I can't get no help up in here. And we thank them for their faithfulness and their dedication as we have reorganized and look at how the number uh, has grown and the Lord is adding. We believe God will continue to add to the number. Lord, we thank you for our nurses, for this ministry uh, that cares for our congregation. We come now in this rededicatorial prayer. As they rededicate, recommit themselves to the work of this ministry. I stand as their pastor to charge them now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to increase their prayer life. I charge them to be responsible for praying for the health of our congregation. I charge them every day, oh God, to pray for the church, pray for our health and our wellness, pray for our mental health, to pray for our physical health, to pray for our spiritual health. We ask now, God, that they would recommit themselves, rededicate themselves to the work of being first responders. We pray now, O oh God, that you would give them a watchful eye, discernment of spirit, to see proactively if someone stands in need. We pray, O oh God, that you continue to come into their hearts, for we cannot minister without love. We cannot minister without true commitment without you being in our heart, without you being at the forefront. So Lord, we thank you that in spite of us, you have called us to this great ministry. You've called us to this great work. You've called us, oh God, to look out for one another. As you said in your own words, Jesus, by this, the world shall know you're my disciples if you have love one for another. We thank you for nurses that have love for our congregation, that have love for our pastor, and have love one for another. So Lord, we pray that you continue to increase their numbers, provide the resources that are needed, that this great ministry may go on. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. And all those who could say together, amen, amen, and amen again. We'll now receive uh, the history followed by remarks by President Gwendolyn Moultrie. Amen. You all may be seated. Amen. God for our family that came back this week. I thank you in advance for those. Thank you, thank you, thank you who brought. We wanted to get them some uh, ropas, some clothes, uh, zapatos, shoes to help out. So thank you for those who came and who are going to help out. Amen. Let's give it up for Anna Lee Baker. Amen. Your sister Anna. <laughs> Good afternoon, Saints. Good afternoon. This is the 75th anniversary and this is the history of the Nurses Unit. The Nurses Unit of the Mount Olive Baptist Church was organized on May 22, 1948 from some members of the Pulpit Office and Supply Club, the late Mrs. Elzada Brown, along with the late Mrs. Lily Creighton, and the late evangelist Alice Watts, felt the need for a Nurses Unit for the church. They asked our late pastor, Reverend R.D. Brown, 
and he consented. We received a course in the first aid training by the American Red Cross. Mrs. Alzada Brown was the first elected president. She was succeeded by Mrs. Ella Mae Smith and then Evangelist Alice Watts. Our other presidents were Mother Lily Osu, Sister Rebecca Irving, Mother Eva Robinson, Sister Lucille Richardson, all whom are deceased. Sister Gladys Mazak, Rachel Mathis, Tanya Burke Burnham, Denise Banks, Iris Peterson, Darlene Matavo, and Marsha Cowell have also served as president. Our present president is Sister Gwendolyn Moultrie. All of our presidents have made a contribution to the nurses unit and we commend it and thank all of them for their efforts. In December of 1988, under the leadership of the late Reverend Spurgeon E. Creighton, the junior nurses was organized. Under the instruction of Sharon McCullough's RN, the basic first aid class was given. The unit was recertified in December of 2012 and CPR and first aid under Reginald L. Backus. Though a small in number, we worked diligently to serve the needs of the church. Nurses unit officers and members, President Sister Gwendolyn Moultrie, Vice President, yours truly, Sister Annalie Baker. <laughs> Recording Secretary, Sister Kimberly Clark. <laughs> Our members, Sister Yvonne Burroughs, <laughs> Sister Kim Sewitt, <laughs> and Miss Kaylee Harris. <laughs> Our honorary members, Marsha Cowell, <laughs> Martinez Fault. Rachel Mathis, and Priscilla Stuckey. God bless. Afternoon, church. Pastor. I'm standing here before I'm Gwendolyn Moultrie, and the president of the nurses. I'm not a speaker, y'all, so don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I get nervous. Um, I like to say I, I made a mistake. I got one person was a nurse. Paul F. Foster, can you please stand? Amen. 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 Sorry. I'm I want to say to my nurses, I love all of you. We work very hard together. This year, we got to do more, more work, less talking, more fundraising. Oh, Marsha, no, we got to there, we, we got to go, we, we got to meet. So I want everybody to say, be on your P's and Q's, and we coming strong this time. Amen. We thank God. One of the things that we're going to be talking, you got an announcement. One of the things that we're going to be talking about in our leadership training are, are setting different expectations for the ministries. Uh, everybody ought to be ministry. We are going to, you know, do what we need to do financially, but every ministry needs to have a mission. Needs to have something that we do. Um, I just want to reiterate some names that I'm hoping LeVar Folk, Randy McCray will be here, uh, Virginia Sally, Sister Sadie Nelson. I've talk, spoken to most of you, Elizabeth Arroyo, Bertha Kennedy, Sister Cowell, Tatus, Clunas Gorham, uh, Spectrum Trustees and the Deacons to be here, Patrice Wilkins, Denise McLeod, Sarah Muhammad, 
Sister Rudine Seward, Yolanda, Yolanda Falk, Olive Grayman, uh, Sister Lauren McGuire, Rebecca Harrison, Stella Brothwaite, Joyce Bryant, Sister Essie Dugan, Zelma Staley, uh, Kamisha Evans, Martinez Folk, Sister Tina Martinez Folk, Josephine Jenkins, Crystal Munderland, Dina Weststone, Faye Perry, Yvette Payne, Kim Seward, Denise Thomas, Charles Shelburne, Lizette Bradley, Reverend Munderland, and Deacon McCants. We're putting together our 70. Amen. Uh, so we need the leaders in place that we can go do the work that God has called us to do. So I'm asking each and every one of you uh, who can and who will to be here starting next Saturday morning. Amen. Now it's still raining outside, so I brought an extra sermon. Sunday. I brought an extra sermon. So I didn't want you to get wet because there's a storm out. <laughs> Over the ocean. Now, y'all quit playing. Here we go. All right, as we get ready, uh, this is, is, is offering time. Uh, y'all got it. I didn't even have to prompt you. Amen. It's offering time. How many people discovered you can't be God giving? I, I pray that we don't get so comfortable and familiar with the churchalisms and church expressions that we stop thinking about the profound truth behind those statements. You for real cannot beat God giving. Some of the most blessed people I know are some of the givingest people I know. Life gives to the giver and takes from the taker. I challenge each and every one of us to be in a position of leadership next year. You got to be a tither. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says where your heart is, your treasure will be there also. If your treasure ain't here, I know your heart ain't here. Now, there will be, you know, understand people got challenges, but you need to come talk to me about that. Don't remain in silence. Because in the presence of silence, assumptions persist. So we're asking those who can and who will to start preparing yourself now. I'm giving you till 2024 to start doing it. I pray that you would start before then, but I've never heard tithers complain about tithing. It's just the people who don't tithe. So step out on faith. Give God a chance. Start with 1%. Work your way up to 10% and watch what God can do. Watch what God can do. So it's going to be our prayer uh, that we continue to follow in the discipleship of Christ. Jesus said by this, the world will know you, my disciples, if you have love for one another. I'm praying continually for our church that we would love each other a lot more. We would love one another because Jesus said that's how we're going to know. That's how the world will know. Praying for our church that we would develop an evangelistic mindset and mentality. A man gave me a prophetic word. He said, there are thousands of people who are in darkness. And he said, if you don't do what God is calling you to do, God going to find somebody else. If you don't do what God is calling you to do to help lead somebody else to that light, God will call somebody else. I don't know about y'all. I don't want to miss the blessings and the opportunities that God has for my life. Because I won't do what he's telling me to do. So we're going to be focused on three things. Learning how to love each other. And in that love, developing leadership. We're going to be focusing on our tithing and our giving. We're going to be focusing on discipleship. Amen? Amen. Amen. So not much else to say. We're going to march around. Uh, get your best gift that you can. There will be uh, four ways to give that are up on the screen so that we continue to give. There are some economic challenges that are coming. If you look, uh, whenever there is an election, historically, it's always been an economic downturn. Because it's a part of how this nation works, trying to shift whatever political powers may be. So I want to challenge each and every one of you 
that we can have abundance even in a time of famine if you keep trusting God. For Isaac sold in the time of famine and the Lord abundantly blessed him. So you don't want to try to do it after the fact. Hear what I'm saying. You don't want to try to do it after the fact. Start now and watch God hold back the devourer. Watch God allow your field to bring forth fruit in its season so that your harvest may be plentiful and all nations may look upon you and call you blessed. Let's get our best gift in our hand. Dear Lord, we thank you that what's in our hands started in your hand. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you trusted us enough to let it flow through us. For Lord, if you ever decided to cut off the flow, we wouldn't have anything to give you back. Lord, sometimes your greatest blessing is that you preserve and keep our health. For medical expenses are the number one cause of bankruptcy in America. There are so many ways that you bless us. and You've asked us for the simple things. You asked for less than the IRS. You asked for less than, I think, New York City taxes, 10.875. Yep, less than child support. <laughs> you don't ask for much, but when we prioritize you, you have promised that all of our needs would be met. So Lord, we ask you now to help us display and demonstrate the faith that is required. For on the other side of faith, is your greatest works. So now, Lord, as we sow these seeds in the kingdom soil, kingdom territory, we're thankful. The street fair we had that was an evangelistic tool cost us $15,000. Air condition costing us money. Our 3K walk is going to cost us money. We see the evidence of the work and the witness that is going on all around us. And it takes believers sowing the tithes and offering so that the work may continue, Lord. This is our humble prayer. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and say amen. Starting in the balcony, we're going to march around.
Last week was y'all's 17th wedding anniversary, right? Help me thank God. Last week, the Cooks, Deacon Cook and Deacon S. Cook celebrated their 17th wedding anniversary. I think Sister Tanya has a birthday coming up. Amen. Amen. Tracy, I'm sorry. I just said hi. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Sister Tracy, amen, has a birthday coming up. Amen. So if all hearts and minds are clear, let's thank God again for our nurses. Let's give God some praise for the worship team, for each and every one of you standing all over the building. Don't forget to register today for the walk, starting back Bible study on Tuesday. Register for the walk, starting back Sister Paulette Foster, amen, we thank God. We thank God for Sister Paulette Foster, amen, who made her way. Uh, back with us today, we are eternally grateful. Amen. Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, all hearts and minds are clear, we are grateful that God has kept us through another day, another opportunity to be in the house of worship. Please pray for me as I pray for you. Uh, I need your prayer right through here. Amen. I need your prayer as I pray for you. Uh, gracious and eternal God, we thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you continue to do. Lord, we need you in a special way. We thank you, Lord, that you are but a prayer away. You are but a sincere heart's desire away. So, Lord, fill our hearts. Fill our minds with an earnest desire for you. Lord, help us to be passionate about the things that you're passionate about, about the ministry and the work that truly gets you excited. The Lord, in spite of all that we've done in our lives, sometimes make you weep, maybe even make you wonder 
why you saved us from what you've saved us from. We thank you that you've given us an opportunity that we could be the source of your joy, that we can cause you to rejoice. We thank you now, O oh God, for that blessed privilege and opportunity. And now, Lord, help us to not be hearers of your word, but to be doers of your word. Shame on us, God, if between this Sunday and next Sunday, we don't tell somebody about your goodness. Shame on us, God, if between this week and next week, we don't find somebody to tell them about who you are, how good you've been, and the difference you can make in their lives. Make it real for us is our humble prayer. Now, Lord, as we go from your gathered people to your scattered people, rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. We ask now that you would shower us with your presence. Touch us with your blessings. Keep us in your arms. And we know that everything will be all right. So now, Lord, as we go from your gathered people to your scattered people, rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. And we promise to give you all of the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. It's in that name that is above every name, the mighty, the marvelous, the miraculous, the majestic, the magnanimous, and magnificent name of Jesus the Christ. All those who could said together, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. If you brought uh, some clothes uh, for our friends, uh, please see them. Please see them so we can take care of that. Amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you.